So how are you feeling about this upcoming match? Because I, I have some mixed feelings on this. I, I feel like, it, in my opinion, it's like pretty 50-50 on who could win this one. It's a tough one, right? Because I think going into this, if you would have told me you put teacher over here, Marine, you'd kind of not necessarily fully discount here, Marine, but mm -hmm. he's just he's very vocal about having a tough time against Protoss in particular. Does not like yeah. the matchup. Um, but he's just performing at such a high level, at least yesterday and, and today. He's not been disappointing either. Beating so. Cyril, kind of, you know, a, a pretty nice achievement. Yeah, <laughs> he's doing good. And he also 2 0 Showtime, which again, yeah. Um, and, and I don't think it's that Showtime's playing really poorly, and that's why you say that. Mm -hmm. Again, Showtime, of course, if he's not in like the top two or three, it is below his level on some level. But at the same time, all these guys are so, so dang good that it's, yeah. it's okay that on one day that these are the kinds of results. So. All of a sudden, become a little bit more fearful. That being said, Petit Drogo has been playing really well as well. Yeah. Um, in this group, he finds himself a little bit more in the middle of the pack, but just off of WESG, where he did very well for himself, he looks dangerous. Yeah, I think Petit Drogo is sitting around like three and two or something yeah. in the the group standings. So definitely not doing too shabby right now. But I am really interested to see also like this is where I am really sad that we haven't gotten a chance to see. We haven't gotten a chance. Maybe some of you guys did get to pull up the other streams. But what happened exactly in that Hero Marine versus Showtime series? Just because. I do think that there are some stylistic, like pretty significant stylistic differences between Showtime and uh, Petit Drogo. Like when I think of Petit Drogo, I usually think of him having a little bit more aggression put on, where Showtime is, you know, he's the wall, he's a little bit more defensive. So depending on how here Marine approaches this, we may even see different sort of styles or like different types of attacks or defenses coming out from Hero Marine in this series versus the other one. So I'd love to see how things play out now. I would too. Um, so I think we're just currently waiting on Hero Marine it is right now. So before we move into game number one, the first map is going to be Cyber Forest. Um, any kind of predictions on what you would want to see? Because I know you were talking mm. about how Hero Marine having a bit of trouble right now in TVP. Uh, a lot of Terran players feel like their best chance right now. I know you even had a whole great discussion uh, about mm. it on the Pylon show. A lot of Terran players feel like they kind of their best chance to win versus Protoss right now is to go for those two base all ends. Mm -hmm. I, I honestly, as far as prediction goes or, or preferences or wants, I don't really have much of that. Mm -hmm. I think Petit Drogo plays a pretty meta-focused type of PBT, and Hero Marine's not too far off from that as well. So mm -hmm. I don't know that we'll see the two-base timing um, from Hero Marine, but I'm looking forward to just the matchup because I think of them as very evenly matched. Yeah. All right. Well, the first game is loaded on up. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let's jump in, introduce these players. We're going to be starting down here. In the bottom right-hand corner of the map, top of the red Terran player, he is Mouse Esports' Hero Marine. Just broke the 100k mark. Congratulations again, Gabe. And at the same time, he just turned 21. Oh, yeah, he just turned 21. I actually, I, I never realized this, but I think someone else just turned 21 as well. Cyril. Cyril. Mm, very ready. close in age, yeah. Happy birthday, Cyril. Uh, but spawning up here in the top left-hand corner of the map, we have the blue Protoss player. He is Petit Drogo, Team Makers. Blue. What's your favorite color to spawn as, Jeff? Oof. Um, well, I, I do the green-red thing, so I don't even know. Ah, uh, yeah. To be fair. I know but a lot of people actually, what. a lot of people make themselves white, I think. Oof. Um. Not in 2019, I think. You're <laughs> there was a time where that was definitely the case, but now I find myself okay. seeing everybody in equal levels. All the different colors. That's true. You actually cast all of your opponents to be the same color. That's right. Uh, so, in Protoss vs. Terry, <laughs> there's always that kind of fun game where the probe needs to get a scout out to see, okay, is it a one Rax expansion or is it going to be double gas? Is, Terran player going to play one of those kind of one base attacks with a later expansion. And he's going to immediately see there's a command center being thrown down the low ground. So that definitely gives a little bit of a sigh of relief. No proxies or anything coming out. Yeah. Um, Drogo, definitely not uh, below doing some of his own proxies every so often. So we'll see if Hero Marine bothers to scout as he's just straight going to throw down the reactor. There is a Reaper out. I think that's the safety. Obviously, okay, otherwise yeah. a probe would get really annoying. But yeah. Uh, yeah, here Marine, again, if you watch the stream, is one of the most entertaining ones. Uh, very, very good <laughs> Terran player, but he's also actually commentates quite a bit and talks a lot about his thought process. So, um, yes, he's a prolific kind of balanced whiner, but at the same time, uh, I think he's very critical and I think it's fun and he's obviously a top mind of StarCraft, so it's 
very valuable, but he talks a lot about how he's not in favor of the proxy kind of Terran meta. Uh, he thinks of it a little bit more as kind of a gimmick, and that's part of the reason why he has a tough time in the matchup is just because he's not really willing to do that. Mm -hmm. um, I think the most dangerous Terran players for me to think of these days are the ones that are willing to do all of it. That's kind of what Maru uh, brings to the table, right? Like, he he does proxy a lot. Maybe he's a little bit more heavy-handed on that, but at the same time, he's good at everything else. So he, when you face Maru, you're kind of expecting everything. When you face your Marine, you should probably pretty much expect, yeah, it could be a two-base timing, but it's very often three bases or more, and it's just kind of a macro play. So I think the pros players tend to feel comfortable being the aggressors against him. Yeah, it's also going to be interesting just because, like you said, Hero Marine kind of playing a little bit different than a lot of other Terran players. And I know a lot of the European Protoss players, or I mean Zerg players, or even Terran players, have a hard time finding good practice partners that are Terran, yeah. especially ones that are going to play like Hero Marine does. So, interesting to see what uh, Petit Drogo has in store for us. He does go for the Oracle, and he manages to keep that Reaper from getting the main base, but I think the Reaper may have just caught Vision of it and yeah. beat it before, catches it now. Yep, and its life is definitely worth it. In fact, even a second Oracle coming out, which is very, very interesting. Um, you can see a Cyclone queued up here, and that Cyclone's super dangerous. If it locks on, a couple extra shots from these Marines, and all of a sudden that Oracle's in a lot of danger. So it's just going to settle for the Scout. Seems pretty normal stuff. The Tech Lab on that factory is a big tell as well. Typically, that's going to be tanks. It's a little bit early for any kind of significant number of Cyclones, um, also because that's kind of weak to a blink opening. Mm -hmm. And there is that tank, so very much so should be some kind of three base play for Mr. Hero Marine here. With a double Oracle, and now a Phoenix, by the way. Well, I, I love how, gosh, I'm like the worst commentator in the world. Because yesterday I'm like, the night is, <laughs> and then it's like all, every game. And then today I'm like, well, he plays a very meta style, and he typically does. And it's not like this is the most crazy thing in the world, but at the same time, two Oracles and a Phoenix. It's a little bit different. And then going back into a third Oracle, adding on oh. more Adepts. Are we going to see a big attack over here, you think? Or, Jeez Louise. Well, I can't make any predictions, my yeah. man. So you're on your own. It's okay. Everything I say, it's the opposite. I, I don't know. Yeah. Well, the Adepts are making their way across the map. Twilight Council is only just now being added on. So just to know, these Adepts are not going to have Resonating Glaives or anything, but they're going to see what damage they can get done as he probably shades forward. Wow. There's, There's not that much here. here. No. Uh, there's a lot of Marines, I think, still maybe in the main base to deal with the Oracle, and that Holy. is going to hurt. If this hits before the Missile turret, it's just actually over, by the way, and I think oh. it will. Oh, boy. Yep. And the Phoenix lifts up that one Siege Tank. The Oracles go ham on some of these Marines. The Cyclone trying to get some damage done, but that gets focused right down by the three Oracles. All the Marines are disappearing, and while most of the Adepts have been picked off, there's also not a, left, a lot left here for Hero Marine. Yeah, I don't think this will actually kill Hero Marine, but just the damage alone is is massive. Resetting the tank count here is a big deal. The Marines are gone. Now, keep in mind, behind this, Petit Drogo's got that third base up and going. So, yes, he is going to lose quite a bit here. In fact, not even a missile turret inside the main. Oh, boy. Most of the Marines have been picked off. That last Oracle is going to be able to get out alive after killing 12 workers. It's 52 to 31. And remember, Petit Drogo took a third a long time ago. Yeah. I don't see anything of the sort for Hero Marine. No. And uh, whatever was going to be the plan for Hero Marine, that too just got changed, right? So his army's completely ravaged. His ability to be aggressive anytime soon is gone. Even as Stim and Combat Shield are nearing completion and plus one, there's just not going to be a whole lot of attack potential off of this. Mm -hmm. He's going to have to make a Mr. Turret probably in the main because there's double Oracle out. Need to remake the one that is natural. So he's he's just kind of pinned back, and even even now, if he drops a third command center, not like that's an optimal choice. He he knows there's at least mass adepts out there or something along those lines. It's just a bad spot for him. He's this yeah. is a salty time. This is time to be salty. No, it's absolutely tough. I mean, sometimes the adepts will run in or something, and they get a lot of worker damage. But you keep your army alive, and then you can go for a big attack, and you still have some Ooh. advantage because they sacker a lot of that. But in this situation, well, getting the oracles and the phoenix is nice. Uh, but, yeah, it's one of those situations where your army also got reset and your opponent's army is also going to just be building up. Plus one weapons is getting close to finishing over here. Resonating Glaze finishes right in time for this attack. Hero Marine, this, I don't think this is going to work at all. I think you're right. You might be right, Mr. Fear Dragon. You might be right. Pretty Sorry. big mistake. There's the Guardian Shield. A little bit of force fields to kind of just trim down this force. And the Teacher has all the time. Well, he can actually back up just like he did. Mm -hmm. No reason to fight right now. Uh, he knows that with Hero Marine moving out, this is what he's leveraging. There should not be a third behind this. There's nothing insignificant. So Petit Drogo just has to defend. And he's going to go for Blink after 
glaives, and I kind of like that because the bigger, the scary thing here is not the two tanks. It's going to be the bioforce, obviously. And there is no artosis pylon, by the way. It's a triple pylon farm of gateways. So again, he's just very safe. Hold on. Yep, gets a single pylon, has to pick up and get out of there, though. Hero Marine still looking for more damage, but he might be taking some more damage on his side of the map. Two adepts get warped in from the warp prism. Ooh. Bio stims forward. I don't actually see many medevacs either, guys. There's only two medevacs, and those are on the other side of the map dropping. Yeah. Third medevac is on the way. He doesn't even have a reactor on that starport. Ugh. Not a great time for Hero Marine. Yeah, he was massively supply blocked, so he did a call down there as well. And now he's queued up three depots. You can just kind of see Hero Marine's just off his kilter. He was, yeah. he was hoping to get something done with that attack, but facing the army he did. He was, again, and it's not like... Uh, so if, Hero Marine's been just given hard choice after hard choice, and each one has been, you could you, you could say, incorrect, if you will, but it's also like he didn't have another choice. You don't, you he's don't making attack the most of what he can. Yeah. yeah. And he's dead. That's the... Mm -hmm. That is the hard reality of StarCraft sometimes. It's like, is there a comeback here? I guess, but it's like so inconceivable and hard to imagine. I mean, this is it. So he's gonna pull the SVs and attack. I do also like that he's uh, added in a couple of Widow Mines because I do think that if there is something that can try and help make an engagement that sure. should have gone terribly uh, go a little bit better is Widow Mines. Although that sometimes can backfire quite literally on your yeah. own uh, units. So we'll see how it goes. See where he gets set up. A Liberator also already taking a lot of damage from those Stalkers before the fight even starts. At least he has SCVs to repair. <laughs> yeah, if he wants to, and he is doing it, you're right. <laughs> I love this from Petit Drogo, by the way, too. If he would have engaged right there, that would have been really bad and incorrect. But instead, he's just kind of slowing it down, trying to siphon off a few units. Hopefully, he doesn't buy too much time, but he's just so far up in supply. And, and, and shading on top basically makes the tanks into his own units. Like, the, this Bioforce is going to take splash damage. Here. Yeah. Widow Mines are not actually sieged up either, so these Adepts are going to survive a good bit longer. And even when the Widow Mine goes off, it actually kills the Liberator. So here we go. Petit Drogo cleans house here, nearly doubling in supply of his opponent and still has his economy intact. GG. First game goes to Petit Drogo. Wasn't GG. Yeah, it was okay. <laughs> You're a stickler for that one, aren't you? I always find it a little bit interesting players that do and do not yeah uh, but no your marine is a classy tournament guy mm -hmm. that was tough uh seven or eight adepts three mm -hmm. oracle and a phoenix like i said that is i would love it's too bad at this stage we're not doing any reviews i think it's next stage so if we yeah. see Drogo, we'll, we'll get there but that feels to me a little bit like a i think if gabe does this thing i get him because mm -hmm. It's not like it's the biggest of investments, but I'll tell you as a pros player, three oracles and a phoenix against like players that do have that bunker, they do have that missile turret. Or even the have... marines in the main base or in the low ground to help yeah. out. Yeah, all that stuff. No, it's definitely a situation where Petit Drogo kind of caught Hero Marine a bit off guard and was able to capitalize on that. Uh, we'll see what he's going to actually have for us in game number two. Because, again, like it's a best of three. Taking one of the games is nice. You want to be able to win that series, not just to try and get an edge over your opponent in the series, but even just getting the difference between fourth or third place or something in the groups or fifth place, it all has a massive difference, not only in the prize money that you could potentially earn by uh, where you get put in the playoffs, but you actually get to play less matches in the playoffs to make a deeper run. It has a huge impact, even just getting one spot further in that round robin. Is one spot further in the tournament. Yeah. Literally, there's one less it match you have to play. Is. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but, of course, map number two, it looks like it's going to be Kairos Junction. Uh, Hero Marine, we didn't really get to see what exactly he had planned. He was going in some of the tanks. He did seem like he was getting a later third base and stuff. Mm -hmm. But the usual kind of play that a turn player would like to do in those situations didn't really get to come to fruition. So we'll see if uh, Hero Marine's going to be able to get to, I guess, play a little bit more of his game this time. Game number two. Yeah, and he's going to be a little bit thrown off because I think that, like I said, I would be interested to hear confirmation of this, but this feels like that was a snipe build. It feels like it was very much so meant to take out exactly what uh, Hero Marine just did. So a lot of times when someone does something like that, you definitely don't do the same build again for the risk of the, just that cheap win. Mm -hmm. uh, and oftentimes you go to a cookie cutter kind of a timing attack. So I'd be very curious to see if Hero Marine overcompensates and plays a lot of defense or if I, what I think he's going to do is just a two base attack. All right, well, we're starting up here in the top left-hand corner of the map, top of Kairos Junctions, the red Terran player sitting down 0-1. He is Mouse Esports' Hero Marine. The game. And
And down in the bottom right-hand corner of the map, we got the blue Protoss player currently setting up one and zero. And now at match point, he is Petit Drogo. Team makers. Formerly known as Iron Chain, in case yeah, you guys are wondering. got a picture of Artosis for their little character. You see that? Oh, yeah. Looks quite wise. That's interesting. Well, ball is in the court of Mr. Petit Drogo here. Um, I think, you know, he needs to win more. So that's also, mm -hmm. if he wins this, he's pretty squarely in the middle. I think from, doesn't that put him at like four and two or something? Yeah, because I, I think he was sitting at. I bet that effectively qualifies him. Yeah, I th I, I'm pretty sure he's already yeah, actually, nearly guaranteed at this point. Because I know he also has a pretty good map score. Yeah. Um, so it, it might be a little bit close, but he should be pretty safe right now. I mean, you have to also remember that the other thing that would have to happen is Rail would actually have to beat Rainer 2-0 yeah. for other things to happen. So uh, Petitro is probably pretty safe. But again, it's a, every single spot that you can make it further in just reduces the amount of work you have to do in the playoffs. So we'll see what he's going to be able to do. And if, again, better map score can also help out in the case of a tiebreaker. So a 2-0 better than 2-1. Jeez, Louise. When you drop these knowledge bombs like that, Rovi? Well, it's, it's not always the case, though, right? That 2-0 is not better than 2-1? Yeah, like in a, if you're in a tournament bracket or something, then it, if you beat your opponent 3-2 versus 3-0, it doesn't have any impact later on in the tournament, right? You know what? You're technically not wrong. Well, I'm going to call you... How am I wrong, Jeff? I just... <laughs> I can't help. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm an old curmudgeon commentator anyway. at this point in time. So every moment we spend explaining to an audience <laughs> that 2 0 is better than 2 1, another chunk of my soul dies. And I'm just like, <laughs> this is what I do for a living. And so I'm like, well, hang on. All right. In the 1986 Wimbledon tennis tournament, okay, Bob Bailey beat Jeremiah Fre Frederickson 3 <laughs> 1. And the other guy on the other side of the bracket, I believe his name was Kevin Smakin. He won 3-0. No impact on the tournament. And I'll be like, now I'm in this debate. <laughs> my soul dies even further. Uh, but you know what? Well, He's I can't that. can't wait to find out, you know, Jeff, because uh, Petit Jirogo goes through some aggression. He kills six workers. It's better than killing five workers. I know. And you'll say that, and someone will <laughs> be like, I need to hear that. Well, hey, look, uh, this game, I was I was really expecting Hermione to do something very different. But so far, I mean, here comes that Cyclone. Mm -hmm. I don't think he had the bunker last game. No, he did not have the bunker last time. So a little he, bit more. Did he have the tech lab? Okay, he, he left the tech lab on the barracks, I think, and went for stim and combat shields pretty quickly. Last no, this game is so well. far the same. Yeah. Except for the yeah he's going to do the swap around. He is there doing the swap around there. Now it's different. Mm -hmm. So we're prob are we going to see the Raven or the Banshee? Because I know Drogo was saying that he's been playing against Hero Marine, and he does like to go for that Raven a lot of the time. Um, Reaper pokes on forward. Nice little surround there with the Stalker is going to guarantee the kill on that. And there is that Raven that yeah. uh, Drogo was talking about. You know, and this is uh, not going to spend too much time on this, but just think about this from the programmer's perspective. Like, like this game. That's a nice thing. Three Oracles, seven Adepts, and a Phoenix show up. He just dies again, 100%. I promise you. So that's, and you might look at that and be like, well, that seems really stupid because, you know, it, you could just lose for free. It's like, yeah, but but in StarCraft, sometimes you, in, in Terran players will tell you more often for them, you have to kind of play that way. You have to say, yeah, yeah, if they do the exact same thing again, I'm probably dead and I'm in a lot of trouble. But if you play every game countering every potential thing you could be facing, you will lose more often than you'll win. So yep. it looks weird, it looks risky, but that's that's the gamble he's taking. I mean, I think we even saw some games yesterday where some of the, the takeaways there was, like, I think actually it was Hero Marine even playing one of his games, uh, the first game yesterday. He was playing extremely safe, and it was just too safe. He, he ended up yeah. trying to account for too many things, and he just fell behind because of it. And we do have, I think, War Prism making its way forward. The four Stalker drop can pick off of maybe a few SCVs over here. Stats ass. Now, the reason he picked up so soon and got out of there, you might be wondering, is because of the lockdown potential off that Raven. If you don't pick up those Stalkers, and the Raven comes over and shuts down the War Prism, well, then you're on an island by yourself, and you're going to lose some Stalkers. So, very nice pickup. It's not meant to do a whole lot, but by this little harass, he sees the Raven. He knows what he's facing. Gets a little bit of worker harass, and just kind of gets a, a beat and a pulse on what Hero Marine's doing. 
Yep, Bunker finally gets salvaged there for Hero Marine, feeling a little bit more safe and confident. And Colossus number one is on its way out as the robotics bay is finished up. Mm -hmm. uh, once you get up to Colossus, that's when, you, that's when you start to feel a little bit safer, usually. But with a Raven out, that does complicate matters. Because yeah. if the Interference Matrix goes out on those Colossus, it's actually a very nice timing that a lot of Terran players like to abuse. They shut down the Colossus, you lose all your anti-air, or sorry, not anti-air, you're uh, lose all your AOE damage, and then you mm -hmm. can just uh, roll over the Protoss player with the SCV full. But third base on the way instead. Here's a fun fact for you. How do you get that Warp Prism to follow the army? Or is it on the same hotkey, you think? That's a good question. Cause that, so for those who don't know what Jeff is talking it about. Looks like it's you, following, right? Yeah, if you just right click a Warp Prism on a unit or something, which is normally how you get stuff to follow, it's just going to pick up that unit. So that's... It's is it in the command card, maybe? It's actually a hotkey to follow? Yeah, I don't know. There's going to be somebody who's like, Jeff, it's not stupid. Like, but I don't ever get my war prison to follow my army. I don't, I don't know. So that's interesting. Uh, now, as Ruby pointed out, I think this is worth mentioning, this this little duel is interesting. So we know the Raven's out there. It's going to be dang near match, or excuse me, max energy. Mm -hmm. can shut down the Colossus. So the, gamb the gambit here, the game for Petit Drogo, if you will, is either bait that out or dodge it by picking up the warp prison before the Matrix can hit. This is very tricky micro, but it is mm -hmm. possible. Um, or use your Blink Stalkers, which don't quite exist just yet. He's about to have Blink finished. Tragically, not in time for that Stalker. And kind of slow down this attack. Mm -hmm. well, he's going to go for the Blinks. Actually, he's taking the whole army out here. Got to be careful if you decide to Blink too aggressively there, as you really do want that Colossus and Sentry back up to take on that army. Yeah. So decides to back up, forces that army back, or at least you know scares what, it off. The, the army of Hero Marine was not was not super sizable, so he was kind of out there sharking around, just trying to aggro a little bit. But it's kind of funny, because when a Protoss player sees that size of an army doing that behavior, I really feel like it, it makes them feel better. Um, because when it's a giant Bioforce flying mm -hmm. around and sniping observers and threatening a Doom Drop, that to me is more scary. But when you see that size of a Bioforce, obviously not really posturing for a full-on aggressive move, you go, wait a second, I got three Colossus, charge is about to finish. I'm doing okay, I'm actually fine. Uh, he's not even adding a Temple Archive. He's going for the fourth before that, actually. Yeah, I mean, a lot of Protoss players tend to feel a lot more confident as they go further into the late game, for sure. Hero Marine adding on four Ghosts at a time, though. He finished yeah. up that Ghost Academy a while ago, and he's he's just basically saying, Petit Drogo, come at me. Let's, let's go into a late game situation yeah. that most Terran players don't feel confident in. And maybe the hope here is also that Hero Marine has been doing the style a lot. He feels confident in it. And kind of funny enough, a lot of Protoss players, especially in Europe, mm. don't really get a lot of PvT practice, so they might feel good about it usually, but... Uh, uh, scouting Immortal, classic. <laughs> Does he get out? Nope. No. Now, Ruby, I would be very surprised if we saw a fourth CC. I think this is actually going to be... Three base times? Yes, it's going to be a round or two, maybe one more round of Vikings. Nope, I was wrong. The four ghosts is just the energy. Probably pull SCVs and lay it on the line. Okay. Well, he's starting to move out. Hasn't quite pulled the SCVs yet, but he is going to get into a really nice spot between the third base and the fourth base. So this is going to make it awkward. Petit Drogo really has to defend this if he wants to keep that fourth base alive. And it looks like Hero Marine is going to ignore the oh, fourth base, gets the Warp Prism, Interference Matrix is every single one of the Colossus. Four Seals do keep this army back out for a little bit, and I think oh. that Raven is no longer with us, so it's not going to be able to Interference Matrix anymore. Two of the Colossus have already fallen. Yeah and the Bioforce is mostly untouched. There's no Storm here. He did add a Temple Archives, but he's so far just using it for these Archons. And more EMPs landing. The EMPs got to be MVP. They really softened up the Stalkers. They died for free, and now they peeled off the Shields. Will it be enough, though? There are Zealots being added behind this. Mm -hmm. The fourth Nexus hasn't died yet. Now, thankfully, Hero Marine did not pull SCVs, so even if this attack is an all-out win, the game's not necessarily over for him. Yeah, it, it does kind of hurt that he never started up a 2-2 upgrades or anything, and he's now... Okay shape, bro. Yeah. He's okay. Oh, yeah, the Liberators really made it a lot better. See, now, what just happened there for people mm -hmm. at home, Ruby was out in the middle of the ocean, about to talk about not having upgrades, and what I did is I threw out the Life Preserver, and I said, Ruby, come back in here to these quiet, beautiful shores. Hero Marine's safe, my friend. Thanks for teaching me how to swim, Jeff. <laughs> I didn't, well, it's not teaching us. It's, it's giving you the opportunity to learn how to swim, because oh, if you okay. just drown out there, 
you can't learn how to swim. Well, I'll try and uh, learn how to swim a little bit better next time. But that does mean tied up series one to one. Hero Marine also getting his own little life vest, his own little buoy that he hangs on to. He's going to be able to move into game number three. Now, is being tied at one and one better than losing zero two? So, in traditional sense, yes. 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 Okay. In some senses, also yes. I like it. Cool. Uh, <laughs> so, with the tied up situation, we do move into game number three. Uh, that last game, we did see Drogo not go for any kind of like weird, super aggressive attacks or anything. That's like yeah. what I would say. You, it's like a more normal way for pro players to say like, oh, if you want to play the macro game let's play the macro game mm -hmm. gets up like a not a super duper fast double forger and they just goes into the colossus plane everything How, what do you think what's your takeaway of the style that hero marine was going for well it yeah it, it's something that a lot of terran players like you point out during the game are a little bit less comfortable doing but the four ghosts at the one time you'll notice he didn't go up actually maybe at a fifth ghost something like that but it was it was just basically those four for yeah. those emps uh, and that is in case there is Storm behind that as well, so you don't just have no answer, get Storm to lose the game. Mm -hmm. uh, but also it obviously helps with the main fight there too. It's just, it was very good, all-encompassing play. And that's kind of what you hope to see from a player like Hero Marine, who he is so mechanically darn good, and he's just a very strong, smart player that when they lean on gimmicks, it seems to kind of get away from the strengths. So Hero Marine is playing to his strengths, and it worked out. Yeah, I really like a, a lot of the very micro-intensive stuff with the Vikings focusing down the Colossus, mm -hmm. of course, the Ghost skin, the MPs off, everything, stimming the bio. But I uh, do want to take a quick look at the current standings right now that we have for all the other matches that are going on over on Zombie Grub, Base Trade TV, and Warty's channel. You guys Ooh. can see over here, well, we got a tied-up series in that first match. A Laser currently 1-0 of Showtime. So Laser yeah. looking really good. Showtime having a bit of a hard day still. And it looks like a laser just won, so that's a 2-0 for a laser. Uh, we also had Lambo falling 0-2 to Cyril, so Cyril's still looking good in some of the other ZVZs. And we got a 1-1 tied-up situation, Rainer versus Cyril, or uh, Rainer versus Rail. So Rail, putting up a fight now. Yeah, that's what he's been doing, man. I'm telling you, like a lot of those scores have been 1-2 or whatever, and he's just he's scrapping out, which is good. Yeah. At 0-5, it's easy to see a guy just kind of give up and be like, whatever, I'm just going to do whatever, but <laughs> yeah, it's nice. Uh, sad for Showtime, though, because Zero Two is like, uh, he only has one more match to go, and that's kind yeah. of a nail in the coffin. Now he's like very much so in the bottom two. Because I think he was already, he's at that point, he was one and four, and now he might be like one and five or something. I believe uh, when you lose after being one and four, you do go to one and five. Yeah, in this tournament. Oh, I'm just confirming what his score is. Correct. Okay. Call it confirm, my friend. Um, but that does put him in a really, really Should he win spot. this one, it'll be two and five, by the way. What happens? What happens after that? Are there any more matches after that? No. But if he loses, he's one and six. Oh man. Yeah. That's tough. I can make a whole segment. What? Of that. Well, what happened if you? No. Uh, we're gonna be moving into year zero for game number three. Finish things off. Tied up one to one. Let's see who can claim this victory here for the round robin. I was kind of hoping that we would just go straight the game there. <laughs> You've cursed me, Jeff. Dude, your discomfort is my spirit animal. <laughs> no. The screen. You know what's so sad is that I just I haven't been on my pun game, so it's like mm. I'm just getting punched in the face all day today. Yeah. And I haven't gotten any jabs back at you. No, now I feel like production. I, I know to, they're production. I used to feel bad for teasing ready. you, but then I saw you commentate with, with Zombie Grub, and I'm like, geez, I gotta step up my game. <laughs> she just destroys you up and down. All right, guys. But who who watches the watch woman? Like who's who's the watch woman? Who's teasing Zombie Grub, right? I think my favorite story is when Zombie Grub first cast her event, uh, which mm -hmm. was like Montreal 2017. I remember because I told her about like my experience, and you were really nice to me at my first event and everything. But then we yeah. had like Challenger and stuff. So I was like, "Yeah, Jeff tried to tease me, and I was just like slapped it down, and then he just kind of leaves me alone." I'm like, "Oh, oh, jeez, is that what she <laughs> thought happened?" Yeah. Ugh. She thinks she thinks that you got nothing on her. <laughs> she thinks she's safe. Well, I, see, I read the room. She's not yeah. a great person to tease on camera, so I don't really. <laughs> what I do with what my joking with her is I just say ridiculous stuff and then set her up to be the straight person where she... Mm. That's funny, though. Yeah. I like that she thinks that. But my form of joking is at Home Straight Cup where I just tease about the copious amounts of alcohol she drinks, <laughs> but, which she doesn't actually, but I'm yeah. creating a persona for her. All right, guys, we're going to be starting up here in the top left-hand corner of the map. Top of the red, Terran player from Mouse Esports. He is Hero Marine. One of the coolest names in all of StarCraft, Gabriel Sagat. It sounds like a Street Fighter fighter. Yeah. 
The only name that I would put above it is Max Angel. Yeah, well, that that's, is, a, that's above a lot of I names. Know. Well, starting up here in the top right-hand corner of the map, we have the blue Protoss player. He is Petit Drogo, Team Makers. Who's Max Angel again? Estrella. That's right. He's going to be playing Jeez. in two matches, actually. We're going to have Estrella playing in the America segment, the first match, I think, versus Cham, if I recall correctly. So, should be a fun one. God. Imagine introducing yourself as Max Angel. You know what's so sad, though, is that Estrella is a cool name, it's not as cool as his actual name. So he doesn't get yeah. introduced as Max Angel very often. One of the absolute only times that's the case, though, right? Yeah. Imagine having the entire world in front of you. Anything is possible. You could name yourself anything at all. And all you do is take your name and add an ES to it. Nathanius. Oh, I was like, a straight uh. what? No. <laughs> it drools out like a like an applesauce that went bad in 1985. Like, Nathaniel. Mm. I mean, it's good for branding, though. Is it, though? Are there any other Nathaniuses out there? Is that a common username? No, there's or no, I mean... If you, how are the Google search results on better. Nathaniel? It's better to have more people want to copy your name. Mm. Look at Poop Feast 420, man. There was hundreds of that during all the rage of that, that time. Well, if people copy your name, as long as you're not trying... Like, I remember, I had a friend. He made a company, and I was like, cool, what's your company name called? He's like, Tabuli. So it's like, oh, you're going to compete in Google search rankings with food, an actual food that exists. That's Wait, there's that's, a food called Tabuli? Yeah. What is that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say it was amazing right. food and <laughs> great in the search rankings. Yeah, no. So we do have a uh, Hellion over here, opening here for Hero Marine. He's also going for the Marine Widow Mine Trap. So mm -hmm. in the meanwhile... Drogo going for that fast robotics bay, but this time I think it's even faster than the last game, as last game it was like on three gates, this time it's on one gateway. I like this in theory. We saw zero harass from Hero Marine in the first two games, and game mm -hmm. three is going to go for a pretty inexpensive attempt. I, I say in theory, well, geez, unless Petit Drogo just falls asleep at the wheel. Oh, no, he does not. Okay. Might have even baited that out, to be honest with you. It's possible. Picks off the Widow Mine pretty quickly with the Observer and the Detection. Picks off a Marine. The Medivac should be safe off in the corner. Looks like a couple of more workers going down thanks to the Hellion and the Reaper over by the third base, picking off some of the workers that were building some pylons there. But uh, this is also, by the way, Hero Marine's first real scout on the army composition of Drogo. I think he also caught a glimpse of the Robotics Bay, but he might have already been expecting it after seeing the army composition of the Robo there. Yeah, I saw the Robo, but also there's an Observer with the army. Yeah. They look at the Widow Mines, so we should have a pretty darn good idea. Well, he's got his own Raven up once again. Ooh, so. Wait a second, though, Rob. Mm -hmm. I'm sensing something. My Protoss senses are tingling. So that double forge timing, mm -hmm. we do have a Robotics Bay. I would love to see a single no-range Colossus, like our good friend Squirtle way back in the day, part of the Swarm, mm -hmm. and then you just go into double forge Charge Lot Archon. Oh, yeah. I don't know that he's got the guts to do it or even the, the know-how. Like, Petit Drogo is actually only 19 years old, so he's not actually. He's like, <laughs> he's like 20, though, or 21. Yeah. He's very young. So there's the Colossus. There's the Twilight Council. Show me the no range. Give this to me now, please. Good old bait and switch. We'll see if he decides to go for it. So far, still not getting range, but he's about to build up to 200 gas. Just spent his minerals. He doesn't quite have the resources to actually invest in range. So. I, don't think he, I think we are witnessing a beautiful moment. He's not going to do Oh, my <laughs> God! <laughs> uh, you, took, you took a risk. I can appreciate it. But, uh... He's still going to go for range, and I think with that first Colossus, if you invest in range, you're going to go oh, for yeah, more Colossus. Yeah. So, uh, a lot four in so it's usually three. Yes. Third base being taken there, though, for Hero Marine as he sets that up just a little bit later than his opponent, and we might actually see something somewhat similar to the last game coming out from Hero Marine with a Raven push out. There's some SCVs transferring to the third. They're not being pulled over for an attack or anything, but yeah. a couple of Widow Mines also joining in. This is this is a bit of an earlier attack than the last one. There's no ghosts or anything being added into this. Well, no. This is uh, very similar to the first push out that he did, is what I would say. It's going to give a Observer here. It does have a couple of Widow Mines, whereas the last attack did not, so we'll see if it is more of a commitment, because right now the army that he'd be facing is going to be just barely a no, it is already a Colossus out here. And with that scan, he sees that, he should be like, you know what? 
let's not contribute too much to this. That's what he should mm -hmm. say to himself. But instead, he's saying, "No, he's doing it. So, Be good." Okay, if all right, yeah, he's going to back up. You're right. I was going to say, like, if if you do see a Terran player trying to commit to that, if you interference matrix all of the Colossus, where do you spend the rest of the Raven energy usually? Uh, either they don't, or they drop like this, the like goose trying to take off in fear, um, auto turret. Which is, like, <laughs> you know, I've got the 50 energy. Here we go. Yeah. Um, I can't imagine he's going to commit to this. I, I really do think this is just sharking around. He already picked off an observer, and he's kind of trying to hide the fact that he has a third. But there's been good hallucination scouting from Petit Drogo, who's going to get all this information. That's really great by him. So, still a good move by Hero Marine, but ultimately. I think Petit Drogo should really have a good idea of what's going on here. Yeah, and exactly what you were saying. It's not just this Hallucinate Phoenix from before. He actually saw with a previous Hallucinate yeah. Phoenix that this was a third base was already taken. But Fusion Core being added on, we're seeing the Liberator production starting to ramp up. And uh, Hero Marine not really going, I mean, he went for the earlier drop, but he kept all the Medivacs alive. So he's going to be feeling OK on just these four Medivacs for now as he gets ready for a uh, much, much later stage of the game. But. Nice blink there. Dodges the Widow Mine shot. Has 2 2 on the way. Drogo also setting up to look like he's going to have that big Doomsday uh, Protoss ball. Yeah. Now, one thing you mentioned last game, Ruby, that was a very astute observation potentially for this game is that Hero Marine did not necessarily go for 2 2 upgrades. Now, that could have been because of the big timing attack. In fact, I would say it was. But if he's lax about that here, it's actually double armory, by the way. Wow, that's weird. But if he doesn't queue up 2 2 very quickly, that very much so maligned fast oh. upgrades of Protoss can become a big deal. So with the double armory, well, like what what is? Do you know what the big unit interaction there is to get the like? Because you if you go over double armory, you're probably getting armor upgrades, right? Yeah. So he's also getting liberator range upgrades. So I imagine Ooh. lots and lots of liberators. Well, now the liberators are over here right now. This is a lot of bio dying for not a whole lot of Protoss. Not exactly the trades that Hero Marine wanted, but a nice little mine hit at least softens up some of the Protoss Ooh. army. I mean, if there's a Warp Prism here, the game's just over, actually. Maybe the Liberators save him, but lost a lot there, as you said. Importantly, the Raven, by the way. Um, without the, the, oh. the ability to shut down these Colossus, then this is going to be a problem. Yeah, and that's not exactly a unit that you easily replenish back, right? Because you got a reactor on that Starport. You're making your Liberators. You're getting advanced ballistics for that Liberator range. You need a Tech Lab on a Starport to actually build, rebuild that Raven, so it's... It's not something. Well, okay, actually, yeah, if you're good. right, advanced ballistics coming from the tech lab. You're not wrong. That's a dirt right. moment. It's okay. It's what's happened to everybody. Yeah. Now the liberator is going to be safe for now. Stargate's going down, or a Stargate, excuse me, for Petit Drogo, which is actually the correct order for those watching. It's worth noting if you're Protoss, you get to four or five bases and you switch to air. Make the one Stargate. Make the fleet beacon, and then as you make the fleet beacon, or shortly thereafter, then add the additional Stargates, because otherwise. Mm -hmm money spent that you're not using. That is the correct order. You're welcome. You just got 100 more MMR. <laughs> okay, 3-3 three, three is on the way over here for Petit Drogo, but it looks like he just wants to keep poking and prodding, see if he can find an opportunity with Liberators aren't quite siege up in the right spot, sees how big that army is, and ooh, Drogo feeling confident. He says, you know what? I think I can take that on. There's not that much bio over there. The Colossus whittling away at this army from a distance. The Stalker is blinking forward. Forcing these Liberators to unsiege and re-siege. I yeah. think that if the Stalkers move a little bit further north, they can pick up all the Liberators, but they don't even bother. They feel confident. Just great army control. This game is about to get to a place that's really scary where like three Liberators at a time are coming out, and uh, Petit Drogo would be dealing with a four or five base Terran, but by attacking at that moment right there, even if your Marine somehow stabilizes, which is going to come at the cost of floating this third base away and maybe losing all his SVs, but... Mm -hmm. Anyways, the even if here is that he's just infinitely behind, because behind this, Petit Drogo is untouched. He's taking more bases, and he is transitioning Oh boy, to Tempests. Well, fourth base is not going to get a chance to lift off, so Hero Marine just leaving that alone there is going to cost him. He loses that base. He's going to be sitting down a base for sure, and you're right. Fleet Beacon on the way. Big blink forward, though. Looks like Petit Drogo just wants to end the game right here, right now. He snaps off almost every Liberator. One last Liberator left over, and I think with the SCV pull, he is still not going to be able to defend, it looks like. Good pullback at the last second there. Very aggressive and ambitious fight, but in order to survive this, and I say that in the sense that Hiramarine's about to die, he had to pull his SCVs. So yeah. I mean, what's the game after this? Sure, there's three Colossus. If you can kill these, great. You're down to 21 workers, and you had your fourth actually killed, and your third is not mining yet. Yeah, go ahead, kill the Colossus. Yeah, this is the moral victory. I'm just going to try and kill the Colossus, but and doesn't even get the last one. The last one. GG.
But T. Drogo takes the 2 1 and is going to be in a pretty nice standing now in the group, taking down Hero Marine, who is one of the guys who I think was pretty close to him in the standings. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, and he got some help, right? Lambo got 2 0'd by Serral. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, Petit Drogo's, and you know, I was teasing earlier, but it is a, a very good point. With that win, and he was in the middle of the pack, he starts to edge himself further up there. If he can take mm -hmm. third in the group, or, you know, I don't know, maybe even second in, in, in some way, then all of a sudden you are getting quite a bit further in this tournament just with the way this works. So, that's a great win for him, because Hero Marine's yeah. uh, the guy above him. Exactly. Now, it's really going to matter now who is playing who. Who is the last opponent that each one of these guys have left to play? Because we've finished six rounds now for the round, Robin, and we only have one round left over. So these final matches are going to determine the final seeding. Who gets knocked out of the round, Robin? Who advances onto the playoffs and what spots? Who's going to have to play less matches there, etc.? So let's take a look at those group stores now, as it looks like all the other matches are finished up since we went to game three there. Uh, we do see that Rainer remains undefeated. Rail did manage to take a game off of him in that last series, but Rainer still remains strong and is sitting at a beautiful five. Actually, no, sorry, hold on. Rainer was... That's okay, not sorry, yeah, Rainer is six and zero. It seems like it was just a little bit of uh, yeah. something missed, but... It was not updated at all. Actually. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Well... Either way, though, we do know that uh, Drogo is going to be sitting in a much better spot now. And you said Lambo, of course, losing that series of Serral is going to hurt him. Uh, but I think that Lambo is still in a pretty good spot now with Rail and also Showtime losing to still advance on out of the group. Uh, looks like our last match has been decided as well. It's going to be Rainer versus Hero Marine. Zerg versus Terran to finish off Europe before we move into the four matches for Americas today. How are you feeling about this one, Jeff? Well, hey, Hero Marine was able to beat Serral 2-0, so maybe he can do it here. It'd be a big one. All right, we'll find out if he's going to be capable of it in just a little bit. Don't go anywhere. You're watching WCS Winter.